Thank you. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. We are going to start this uh, panel. Uh, it's called uh, Human Rights in the Digital Age from My Gender Persuaded. I am Camilo Ratia. I'm from Bolivia and I work for uh, Fundacion Internet Bolivia. We'll be moderating this session. And also, we have people online. Uh, Karen Cruz is also online. Uh, she will be the online moderator, so she's there. And I'm going to give you now some minutes uh, for the panel to introduce themselves, please. So I'm going to start with the people who is here on site. So Julia, please. Testing? Okay. <laughs> Hi everyone. Good afternoon. My name is Julia. I am from Brazil. I am a youth de uh, youth delegate. I c come here with another uh, 14 youth members from Brazil. Uh, I've been invited in a sway of schedule <laughs> in the last and um, in the last minutes, but I study. Currently, I study the, gamifi the gamification of hate in Brazil, uh, internet connection, and international internet relations, social relations, that is. And uh, I, my association is uh, from, the, from the Federal University of Minas Gerais, and I'm really happy to be here since it's uh, such an important aspect to discuss in the internet forums. And I will pass the mic to Ananda. Ananda, please. Ah, thank you so much. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Ananda. I'm from uh, Nepal. It's a small development country in Asia. And uh, I'm so honored to join you here. I'll be talking about uh, the perspective in both online and offline world. I'll be talking about digital divide as well as how it is reflected the offline world, um, the gender gap. So thank you for having me. Thank you. And also we have online uh, two people. Uh, please introduce yourselves. Uh, Umut first, please. Umut. OK, so we can go to Mariana Lopez, please, also. Uh, could you confirm me, please? Ah, okay, they are going in. They need co-host access, please, Karen, so they can actually uh, be on, on camera, please. Let's wait uh, a minute. Okay, there is. So, Mariana, can we start with you, please? Of course. Hello, everyone. Greetings from Mexico. It is a great honor for me um, to be in this panel discussing such an important topic. And um, I work in an organization that's called Redes AC. Um, it's a Mexican organization that works with uh, indigenous communications. And I, I am very thrilled uh, to be here. I, I was in the Youth Like IGF this uh, in Cartagena this year. So it is so important to continue these discussions uh, uh, surrounding gender and access. So thank you very much for the invitation and I'm very glad to be here. Thank you. And also, could you please give access to Umut, uh, who is also need access to be on the camera? Okay. 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 Thank you. Okay, thank you. Umut, please. Umut, please. Uh, your mic is. Uh, your mic is off. Now it's yeah, but we now can't hear you. Yeah, but we can't hear you. Now you can hear me? Yes, please. I see. Okay, perfect. 
Hello, my name is Umo Pajaro Velasquez. I'm from Cartagena, Colombia, and I'm speaking from Colombia right now. Um, I'm here representing the Gender Standing Group and the chair of the, of the group in Internet Society. And I will be sharing with you some visions about how gender is affected by, in general, the, the digital divide and how the gender gap is actually part of the being suffered of the human rights on internet in general. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mut. Thank you, Mariana. Thank you, Julia and Ananda that are here. So we are going to now uh, address some questions. And I know uh, when each of you know which one uh, is going to address. So I'll just go with the first question. And the first question is, can gender be considered as a factor causing inequality? And when we talk about digital rights and the internet. Well, that question is for me. So yeah, I'm going to reply uh, like really fast. Well, the obvious answer to it is like, yes, gender can be considered as factor causing inequality when we talk about digital rights on the internet. And this is because actually how society is constructed and how gender roles are defined because of the biology of certain individuals. So some are privileged than others and that cause uh, a gap between the genders. In this case, we're talking about a digital gender gap and it affects the difference between men, women, and gender diverse people in terms of access and use of the information and communication technologies. Uh, I would like to address four different gender gaps, digital gender gaps that actually evidence in when we talk about this uh, inequality between genders. One is access. Uh, this happening especially more in the global south context when we see that only not only women but also gender diverse people are less likely than men to have access to internet and to own and own a smartphone. This is particularly true, as I say, in the in the global south countries and a more and a more marginalized group of women and gender diverse people such adults living in rural areas or have another intersectional uh, uh, characteristics such as, such as uh, race or some disability. Uh, another one is a skill. Women are less like, uh, likely like the men to have women and gender diverse people and then are less likely that meant to have the digital skills needed to use the internet effectively and to empower them and to be more active inside of the gender or inside of the internet uh, spaces. This can be included some basic, basic skills such as how to use a computer or browse the internet and until some more advanced skills such as coding and programming. And we see that in so many informs and reports that came from different um, uh, NGOs and intergovernmental organizations that says that actually more, the, the, the tech fields are actually more, um, with more presence of men than women and gender the best people and that's causing a disease uh, and inequality. Uh, the third one, uh, women, Women, women and gender diverse people are more likely to use the internet for education and social networking. And men actually use it for more for working and more related internet things like gaming and entertaining. These different use of the, of the, of the internet also cause uh, a, a gap between the two gen in between the genders. And the last and the last one that we, I, I would like to address is safety. Women and gender diverse people are more likely to experience online violence and harassment when we when we actually start to talk about the risks on internet. We also we need to take into account the gender variable because 
for us in general in society, people that are no that are women or gender diverse actually are more exposed to research in 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 the online spaces. This includes cyberbullying, sexual harassment, stalking, and another and another kind of research that people that people just for being women and gender diverse uh, uh, experience online. Uh, <clears throat> uh, so as actually we uh, as well as not anything is like wrong between that. So if we want actually to solve this, we need to like the address some issues uh, that can get us to a point that the, in, that the, not only the inequalities can be solved or or uh, getting to a point that like men, women, and gender diverse people can hit access in more equal way. Uh, one of these probably solutions is expand access to uh, ICTs for all women, girls, and gender diverse people. Uh, also promote gender inclusive digital skill trainings. It does include um, also support women-led tech initiatives because right now only the 35% of the of, of the led tech initiative are led by women and gender diverse people and address online violence against women, girls, and gender diverse people. And to finalize my intervention, I would like to give some recommendations for a more equal and diverse internet in terms of digital rights from an agenda perspective. Is one is to require photo social media platform to take down harmful content, social hate speech, misogyny, and reverse porn in tiny in a tiny manner, in a proper manner develop and implement gender sensitive privacy policies and data protection laws, uh, support organizations that are working to promote digital rights for women, girls, and gender diverse people, encourage more women, girls, and gender diverse people to pursue careers in the science, uh, in STEAM fields, and also challenge gender stereotypes about technology use and online participation. This means to change the way we see that technologies can be used for women, girls, and gender diverse people. Thank you, Umut. Uh, I think uh, you already mentioned some of the inequalities we can have about the gender, uh, with the gender, uh, and also you give some solutions. But um, in that sense, I would like to ask uh, Mariana, uh, if you can give you, you from your perspective, what are the more what are the worst examples of inequality that we should immediately address in relations to gender and internet, and also what would be some uh, actions to prevent this? Okay, thank you very much um, for the question and also Mut for that um, brilliant participation. So I think that. Um, one of the most important inequalities and issues is precisely not only access for women to internet, but also how are women and sexual dissidencies um, shaping internet, right? So I think internet access is very important for educational purposes, specifically, specifically from a gender perspective, because access to information is key in order to make relevant um, changes in people's mindsets. For example, in my experience, I myself became a feminist thanks to internet access. I started using internet approximately when I was 11. And I can still recall and remember that shift and impact um, from when I was analogical to when I started to browse online. And through online tools, I was able to shape my identity, my perspective about gender issues, and my, my feminist approach, since they were definitely not common topics in that time in school or in any other space. And most importantly, as I grew older, uh, it helped me to organize and meet other groups of women, girls, and um, sexual di di dissidences, women in my territory. And this is starting to become a tendency. Everyday people are connecting from younger ages. According to Mexican Association of Internet, 
60% of people that are connected in Mexico are between six and 34 years old. This means that from 88 millions of Mexicans that are connected, most of the population are young people. And um, also 52% of this population are women. Also, due to the pandemic, these numbers have increased rapidly. Children from six to 12 years old had to connect in a sudden way without really um, programs or preparation for it. And I think this is why it is so important to mediate and filter what young girls are and, and dissidencies are accessing. And because it really shapes um, your mindset in such formative years. Definitely a gender perspective is essential. Um, any policy must recognize this historical and systematical differences in which women are raised. It has been deeply studied how technology uh, has not been uh, totally accessible for women and that has been designed from a more of a male perspective. So now that we see that from these, um, these numbers that the problem now is not access because younger and younger people are connected and most of them are women. So um, I think the, the, the issues and the things that should be um, attended immediately are sure the policies and the dynamics that occur in digital space, because they are the same that occur in in real world in the real um, environment, and it, it is also very much um, sometimes these issues are more relevant or more affecting young girls. Um, also, I think, and I will, I think that this really connects with what Umut was saying. According to the Mexican Institute of for Competitivity, only three. Of, of 10 STEM professionists are women. So we are still dealing with a very large gap in Mexico from girls and women that access to this kind of preparation. In order to fulfill this gap, each state of Mexico, we are 32 states, must increase at least in 71% the number of women in their curriculum. This means more than 50% than of what it is right now. And uh, this means that um, it would take the government um, 37 years to really reach an equality in this STEM, in this STEM um, uh, careers. So be because it has been increasing um, year to year, but only in 4.4%. So really, um, why are women not accessing to this kind of education? And it has been um, thoroughly tested that what disintegrates, well, what, um, why women don't, don't feel secure to, to access to this kind of preparation is uh, violence, discrimination, and also a gender differential or based education. That is still something that is happening. So we sure must ensure access for women and sexual dissidencies, but from a feminist gender perspective and really include uh, women in the shaping of internet, but not only from a vision from access, because um, what really is important is to see what these young girls are accessing and how are they accessing internet from very, really young ages. And I think that they must be included, the most younger women in this discussion, no? Like not only from a perspective of they have access for the, the actual necessities, but also how can they be really included in the, the discussions that shape internet. Okay, thank you, Mariana. Uh, I think both both of you uh, and Umut uh, mentioned some uh, inequalities and some um, actions to prevent, and also how we should uh, fix that in, 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 in some terms. But I would like to maybe hear about some something from the perspective from digital rights, and that's why we have Julia here. <laughs> and I would like to address you that question. Uh, uh, is there any difference in access or treatment that you can give the because of gender, can you mention? Or is that, uh, or? Um, excuse me, I think that question is directed to, to Ananda. Ananda. Okay, Ananda. Right? 
Ah, uh, sorry, I, I, I confused what are you. Sorry, the jet lag is... <laughs> sorry, sorry, it happens Okay, uh, Ananda, so. in that case, uh, I would like to talk more about in terms of digital rights, and I would like to know if there is any difference uh, in access or treatment you can give because of gender, no? Uh, I would like to know see you if you can mention some ideal scenario, maybe, uh, how, mm, how rights should be guaranteed. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. So when it comes to digital rights, uh, like uh, for uh, most importantly, the important is access to internet itself. It was a huge burden and I came from, I come from a, a least developed country like Nepal and I represent uh, APAC region. And if you see, the APAC region is the, most of the internet users live in APAC region and at the same time we have the, uh, highest uh, digital divide itself, um, still 40% of the population in our region are still unconnected. And if we see the gender divide in internet access, uh, uh, in terms of Asia Pacific, 54% of women are connected to the internet while compared to 59% of men are connected to the internet. So there's a, a number of like uh, huge gender gap. And it is actually reflected from the offline world. Before we have internet, Women, uh, women and gender minorities has always fought for their right. You know, there was no right to education for women back then, and there was no right to vote. And then, like, it then shifted to the like internet. When you get access, the right, those rights were again the deprived people get to deprive in the online world as well. So uh, right now there's a digital divide and. Into that digital divide, there is again gender divide. If we see the 40% of the people who doesn't have access, the majority is the people from the gender minorities. And if we talk about women and then other gender that are being appeared recently that were not recognized by the society. So actually, the it's about the society, how we shape it. So uh, internet is just a tool that let us access other rights that are actually prevalent in the society. So we have to make sure that we can use internet so that everybody can have equal rights, not only in the internet, but in a society, I think. And I can come back to this with uh, more question, I think. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ananda. Oh, now he's right. And in, in, in those words, uh, Julia, now maybe you can give us some recommendations for more, like uh, uh, Ananda mentioned, like more equality and diverse internet in terms of digital rights. So I would like to make some remarks before I start any recommendation. I guess we have agreements on uh, gender issues offline, uh, the precedence of offline matters, and an age perspective that uh, that we have, uh, uh, like rivers flow, uh, flow to a common response that uh, this, this problems, this problematics are, are, are probably the, f the, f the first and the for the, the most pressing matters that's that what I can uh, gather from this meeting and thinking on that I would like to uh, draw to my educational uh, edu uh, my education upbringing in uh, my college degree about uh, thinking the offline as a uh, a necessity or a problem to tackle through the society as a multi-stakeholder problem, thinking uh, that not only the government should uh, offer more opportunities or should uh, establish a, a better connection or quality connection to, to, to d uh, disconnected areas and so on, but what are we doing uh, as a society, as enterprises, as as companies and governments to uh, to to captivate, to uh, grow empathy and fondness uh, on uh, gender diverse and women, 
to enroll or to uh, close the, uh, the gap that we uh, did have of dissociation of what is the internet, of what uh, are the matters of the internet, or what is uh, a, a career or a work or a research on, on the internet matters. And uh, from my, uh, my perspective in Brazil, I think that the most uh, the most topics that drawn the youth to uh, to s to to science, but especially in the internet and IT uh, world, is uh, sci science fiction and games. And we and th there is a point to be made in gaming culture and in gaming uh, communities that are left unattended, and they are left uh, to be. Uh, developed by ev by company as they wish, and to also not care about problems that exclude a type of gender. Like uh, a company can develop th uh, the game and the community to uh, better uh, accommodate a ma uh, um, uh, her male audience, her male young audience, and that's also uh, um, uh, that's also like an allowance to just not tackle problems like uh, a community health because we have PR, we have marketing and they they also have the power to, uh, like in games, uh, League of Legends, they have uh, records, they have data enough to, 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 to affirm categorically that a player is tired, a player is, has certain behavior, he has certain tactics and so on. We can we know, and everyone this, in this room knows, how can we trace the human personality so deeply, yet why are we not using that information to trace their, uh, their, their bad experiences? Why are we using to, uh, to tackle uh, the problems of violences and why they don't feel interest in, in participating in a game or why do they feel the interest in participating in the gaming community, in that community. Uh, but it's, it's even if that community is not healthy or is not uh, welcoming to them, because there are lots, uh, in Brazil we have some researches about uh, how uh, racism, how uh, Se uh, sexual uh, sexual violence, vir virtual sexual violence, and assault or uh, s uh, sexist attacks don't uh, throw away or don't distance the 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 public or I mean the the the, uh, the racially attacked public or the or the women. They still are part of the. They still want to be part of the community, they, s they stay there, they go on, they move through, and they power through, in fact, and still facing those, those attacks. And it's not a matter of regulation. I don't think that's the point of regulation. It's about like, getting to know better what we are doing with the youth, what we are letting them to experience, and how can we change that? Because th the point is that I think uh, th we, we observe that even though those attacks may distance some, the, the ones that stay are just hurt. They are damaged and that may uh, not have the, the deposit, that surely doesn't have the positive uh, connection of that empathy and the fondness for IT uh, talks, IT matters, IT themes and, so, and also internet themes and so on. Like we are pushing them away, although they are there. They're consuming. They're not moving up on the, on the, that on the, on the ladder. Like, they're not developing their, their, their path in a way that we see the male audience and uh, the white audience developing in IT especially, but also in uh, uh, communication on the communications matters and communications things. So there we can think as a society, what can I do? Me, uh, the, the, the third sector, what can I do? I can maybe employ better activities or research and 
what has the intention of the this, this youth what can i what can we develop to bring the attention of this youth to bring the love of this youth to 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 the 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 connected world the internet world and the gaming world and as companies maybe they can f uh, they can start to think and elaborate projects to think of the, the the health in their community and not like moderating their community like you you can't say certain certain words and we will stop by there like how our communities see us and and how do they view this community people have opinions about different internet communities like oh the reddit the, the discord uh league of legends counter strike dota they all have the opinions about that communities and their commu that those communities are millions of people and what they what do they think about it and how can they how companies can they change they should be worrying about that like to build a better environment and the government obviously can uh, can induce that that the the that development in in to steer that that interest and, and, and to develop economical interest in tackling those problems but uh we're still not seeing that since uh this is today's news the the uh, the, the uk it's one of the most connected countries more than we uh, than more, more the country that countries of we the speakers because we are from latin america and asia they're way well connected than us and yet, 2% of the resources of techno uh, uh, ICT uh, startups are destined to women-led startups. And the rest of the 98% of those resources are destined to male-led audiences. So there's, again, another problem, another, f uh, another suggestion of governments. Like, are we directing better resources to the to or to, to which type of audiences and uh, which type sorry not audience th in this way which type of demographics and i think that's my say <laughs> i maybe overstepped the time yeah, a little yeah. <laughs> no it's okay it's okay thank you julia uh i think uh, you four mentioned many different kind of inequalities from different perspective i like that there were like uh, uh, I don't know if the audience know, but Umut is from Colombia, uh, Mariana is from Mexico, Julia from Brazil, and uh, as Ananda said, he's from Nepal. So it's like they have different perspectives, different uh, uh, vision, they live in different continents, but the inequalities they mention, they are basically the same. So in that case, uh, I think I would like to address like one question maybe for uh, for the panelists, if uh, any of you want to address one of them. Uh, what do you think is important this uh, the, 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 this kind of events like IGF that you are here, you are giving us your perspective. We have basically the same inequalities. We address basically the same problems, and it's been the same over the years. And it's not. Uh, it, 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 it's at some point it, it shows that maybe it's improving. But then when I heard you, then I I see that it's the same problem like like last year, like two years ago, three years ago. So what do you think is important to keep talking about this in these kind of events? I don't know if some of you want to address that. Any of you? <laughs> well, I kind of been here, and you were saying the answer to it when you are when you making the question. It's because we continue speaking that every year, so we need to keep this concept in the topic until the things are better. Because if we don't, if we don't use these spaces to say this kind of things what kind of space we are going to use. So yeah, pretty much you were saying in the question is actually the answer to it. Only the things are better, not only for women, girls, but also for gender diverse people, we need to keep continue advocating, keep continue uh, asking to private sector, to governments, to do something to improve the, the uh, the to improve and eliminate this gender gap that we have. Okay, thank you, Umut. Uh, we don't really have questions from the online uh, participation. I don't know if any of the public here wants to address some question or just talk about this 
a gender gap on internet? I don't know. Okay, if there is no one, I don't know if uh, some of the speakers want to do some final remark about the topic. Just very uh, uh, brief, please. Uh, no one? Julia, Ananda, Mariana, perhaps? Thank you, Mariana. Yes, of course. Thank you. Well, answering a little bit the question that um, was just made, I think that um, using these spaces, even if we are talking about the same topics and maybe it replicates, it means that we care about it, right? And I think that um, younger women and uh, also uh, younger dissidencies are hearing us and seeing that these topics are placed over here. It means that we care and that we are actively searching for it. Also, I think that not everything is lost, at least in Mexico, um, precisely in Puebla, that is where I live. Um, I, I have been seeing a very um, important shift in how feminist organizations are working, right? Um, there is a very uh, proliferant uh, movement, especially from younger um, uh, trans women, uh, also younger women that are organizing um, through um, internet and through uh, discussions that occur in different social media. And they gather up in real life. Uh, they are meeting in these online spaces and are able to make political movements that uh, transcend the digital space. So even though I think that, yeah, we do um, maintain the same problems from um, various years, but I also think that things are, are changing. At least that is what is happening in a lot of, um, in a lot of uh, territories. So I think that um, shaping uh, internet is important, uh, including the younger voices, because um, the relevancy for me is what happens uh, offline, like the opportunity that young girls and uh, young dissidencies have to connect, to, to shape mindsets about these important topics and make changes in real life, to gather and to, and to activate and also giving them this, this first um, opportunities of political uh, shaping of political gathering. I think that is very, very powerful. And that is why I very much appreciate these kind of spaces to include um, voices from younger women from different places of the world and for people to, to hear about it, right? So yeah, I think that is the importance to keep talking about this these issues. Okay, thank you, Mariana. And Ananda, please. Thank you so much. So I would like to reflect uh, in my previous talk, I talked about how, how offline world actually reflected on the online. And now what I wanted to focus as a closing remarks is uh, as we move towards uh, emerging technologies, we are using, uh, actually using machine learning and uh, um, AI. Mm, 2022 was a year when AI actually got so much famous with the generative AI tools like ChatGPT, Google Bard, and we can see how gender bias are actually being reflected on emerging technologies. And uh, there is a collective action needed so that uh, those traits that were seen in offline world are not reflected again in, in terms of uh, emerging technologies. Again, there is another thing when it comes to misinformation, disinformation, uh, targeted attacks uh, in terms of defamation, it's actually women politicians, actors, and gender minorities that are being attacked. Um, they are being targeted for, and uh, how do we actually leverage emerging technologies to actually eliminate those th kind of like things? And uh, Internet, uh, I see it as a tool or a catalyst that can be used to actually eliminate in terms of both like uh, capacity building of uh, women and other gender minorities, again, to actually eliminate this kind of uh, misinformation, disinformation, targeted attacks. Um, that's it. Thank you. I think uh, it calls for collaborative uh, things and maybe digital literacy kind of things, uh, including this kind of things in school curriculum, like we have to start from root. So I call for the like collaborative multi-stakeholder mm -hmm. approach so that we can eliminate these things. Thank you.
Ok, thank you, Nanda. Uh, Julia, any final remarks? Okay, so yes, uh, I will keep with that about the collaboration, and I would like to mention that uh, even if it's the day zero where everybody is tired and everybody is just with the jet lag and all the sessions are not fully bo fully booked, <laughs> uh, I think it's very important these spaces where we can talk. We are actually in a yacht. Uh, uh, debate now we have the day zero to talk but at least we have this space and I would like to mention that and I think it's very important to talk about the gender gap the digital inclusion and I think it's very important to remark that even if we don't have many audience or even if we don't have like uh, maybe more time or even if we don't have all the funding to everyone to come here you heard we have different experiences in all the continent and we try to do an effort to be this collaborative as ananda said and that's why we are people from different parts of the world and yacht especially so thank you so much thank you to be here and just keep uh, talking about this uh, gender gap in internet thank you so much <laughs>